Ellen, so we have the trunk and treats, and just before we have the trunk and treats, this car is a special car, but why is it special for you? Well, it was special for three different families all over time. In the last family, my friend Con Fletcher had it. Um, he had a gravestone, his wife passed 25 years before he did. He owned the car during that time. Uh, the gravestone was a giant one. It had, had her name and birth date and all of that on there, and he had his name, but the center of the gravestone, which is bigger than either person, was a picture of this car. So he cherished it so much, and in the last, in the last five years of his life, he invited me to come look at his 10 cars, and some of them were for sale, and I didn't really want any of those. I did buy one of those. I did want one of those, but the car that wasn't for sale is one, of course, I wanted to buy, his Stevens Durier. So then I told him I would really like to have that when it's time. So within a few months, he gave me a call. We went back to Colorado Springs and we got an unbelievably neat car that we really enjoyed. Oh, wow. he, he honored you by allowing you to have his car that he's put on his gravestone. Right. Wow. Okay, so let's talk about this first photograph. Who do we have right here? This is Frank Durier. He's one of the two brothers um, that created the first manufacturing out of automobiles for America. He's credited with that at least. So he had his own uh, Durier mountain wagons in 1896, 1897, 1898, and then they produced things for sale. Uh, the reason it's important for this picture is uh, he's sitting in my car in 1915, and it's interesting because my car is the only one in the world that has the aviation steering wheel, so that's what he's grabbed hold of. Uh, Frank Durier was really important to automotive history also because he was smart enough to know that the metallurgy for America wasn't as far along as what the European industry was. So he confided with Stevens Armaments Company, and then he, that's where the aluminums and all the special steels that came out, mm -hmm. allowing this car to be 2,500 pounds for the whole car, and this should be a five or 6,000 pound car if you looked how giant it is. I mean, it's nine foot tall. Right. Um, so Frank Durier was really important to automotive history for both those two reasons. Who's the picture we have right here? I see him in the background again. This is Curtis Veter. Okay. Curtis Veter was the first owner of the car. Uh, he had an aircraft bent. In 1907, there weren't really any airplanes, really, but Glenn Curtis was making some airplanes. So Mr. Veter, who owned the Veter company that made all of the speedometers and odometers for bicycles, motorcycles, and cars, bought and ordered the car and there's an experimental Vitor speedometer in the car, a hydraulic speedometer that I don't think they ever made any of. But the interesting thing is he ordered it with Rudge Wentworth European wheels, which are really high-end Rolls-Royce uh, caliber, and that's what they put them on, a wheel. He also had an aviation steering wheel created and made for it, like what Glenn Curtis made for his first airplanes in 1907, 1908. So it's the only airplane yoke in a car. And this is a postcard, and that's your vehicle. And you can tell because it has that aviation wheel and it has the spokes. Yeah. That you can see. Whose car was this at this time? That was Winthrop Rockefeller's car. Winthrop Rockefeller had about 20 or 30 cars and had sort of a museum wow. uh, in the southeast part of the United States. And when he passed on, he sold the collection, or at least a lot of the collection, to Bill Hera. Bill Hera was really responsible for preserving uh, all uh, 2,000 cars for uh, us collectors today to have. Bill Hera went and bought this Stevens Durier, as well as some other cars, too. Wow. And then the last owner was um, Con Fletcher, and that was about 1967, and he had it until 10 or 12 years ago. So that's the, that's the when, four owners. When you picked it up. Yeah. So right off the bat, I see this word. If I can catch it just right. Oil there. Try to catch that properly. All right. What do we have here? This is the only part you need when we go on a 2,000 mile vacation through four or five states. As long as those four or five states have Ace Hardware stores, we've got everything we need to have to work on the car, ex except for a magneto. This magneto is the entire electrical system and ignition system for the car. So if this ever goes bad, this is a really important part. 
right? Because you can't get that. That's, no. That's, there, that's a one-off. I don't think there's any Ace Hardwares that have these in stock anymore. <laughs> yeah, they might not have one of these. All right, we'll turn it around. The other. And this is not light. No, this, it's this 15 pounds at least. All right. Giant magnet. And if you were to rotate this and hold on to these electrodes, you're going to make sure that you're alive. October 17th, 05. Pat pending. Got that. Well, so it's rebuilt and ready to go as a spare. So I'm starting on this piece up close because you wouldn't see that. And if we open that up, you could see that there's some oil pieces there. But what is this that I'm showing here? This is the only piece that you can't get in a modern Ace Hardware store if you're gonna go on a 2,000 mile trip. This is an early Magneto. Uh, it's for our car. It's rebuilt for our car. Um, it is the entire electrical system and ignition system. And these could go out once in a while if you don't lubricate them right. So that's about the only part that we need that we can't make along the way. Wow. So we carry spark plugs too, but so this is underneath the back seat. Okay. And this is heavy. Yeah, probably at least 15 pounds. Notice the date, October 17th, 05. That doesn't look like 2005 either, by the way, it looks like. No. Nope. <laughs> a little earlier than that. And why is this connected like this as a shunt or short? If anybody was get the bright idea of turning this, mm -hmm. you can't have this fire sparks in the open air, it'll burn it up. You can okay. have a carbon arc, so you have it. This is the proper way to carry it. Okay, got it, uh, that's good to know. All right, we're going to go over some of the books here, some in greater detail. Let's start with, uh, uh, let's start with this one because I think it's very colorful and we're gonna start with your car, okay, actually. This, this set of manuals, this is a couple hundred pages of data from the parts manuals to the owner's manuals to the ownership manuals. This one's pretty neat because it's got the, the images in color. Uh, the Lamar system that was used and what they've highlighted is all the bright work, which is what they're really proud of. That's all brass. Mm, so every time, and also they're proud of, you know, this were, This is all you're gonna get as far as the engineering of your car. You're not gonna find it anywhere in your travels back a hundred and some years ago. So this is where your horsepower is and your torque is. Uh, to explain what a six cylinder motor does, why it's smoother than a four cylinder, and why it's, it's smoother than a two cylinder and the approximate horsepower. So you could be pretty much a, an engineer by reading your book and you'd understand how everything operated. Mm, very nice. And the, the pictorials are very detailed and the, the words and descriptions are very detailed. Right. They wanted you to for sure know how your car was built. So this is a four main bearing transmission, four main bearing motor with all ball bearings in the transmission, all in one casting, and show you what the crankshaft looks like and where the gears are inside your transmission. And let's, let's go to the next one, if you don't mind, although that's a great picture. That's great. All right, we'll go to this one right here. This one shows the different models that they had. It's interesting to carry a book on models even if it's not of your car because there's so many similarities in the different cars. So, so a, a fact might be expressed in a different way on a different car of the same manufacturer it might help you understand yours a little better. Okay. It showed you how massive the motors were. And there are no more Model Ys. Nope. They only made about 20 of each of those models. And you can see how massive this, this car was and how the massive ours is. Okay. And in, in all the pictorials they show of the cars, there's not a lot of traffic. It's the only car shown in the picture. <laughs> yeah. There aren't cars. You know, people, one in every 500, one in every 1,000 had a car in general and 99% of the cars were little eight horse, 12 horse, 20 horse things, not this big. These are giant and super yeah. powerful. You know why there's no Model Ys? Because they don't know why. Okay. Okay, <laughs> I'll flip that over. 
So this is the baby. You can see the, the dust coming off the front wheel. The 24 horsepower four cylinder. Okay. And then the Model X. So these were smaller than mine, but they're still giant cars. Yeah, for sure. A four cylinder X. Okay, we know we're coming up to yours soon. And there is yours. Yep. The Model U. There is no smoke coming from that wheel, and you're sitting back cruising in style there. Yep. <laughs> That's a ride in the country. Let's take a second. I want to show all the details of your car. That is quite the history of owners of this car. Absolutely amazing. There's your price there. So our car would have been in the 4500 to $5,000 area. The Reg Wentworth wheels would have been more than $1,000 to get that as an option. I don't know what he made, paid to make the aviation yoke steering wheel that he made, but yeah. he has that too. That's crazy, right? This is great. I wanted to show people this. Don't disobey the rules of the road. Well, there aren't many rules of the road at this point, but I like how it ends up. Not only remember the goal, I just want to show that. Remember, the golden rule practiced in the road will save no end of trouble, expense, and worry. <laughs> so there you go from rules of the road to biblical if, uh, proportions there. Okay, very good. All right, let's show the, um, do, we, do we show this one yet? Let's show this. This has got some good pictures. Well, you got to be a little careful with this one. Our first six. The six cylinders were just barely coming on the market with just maybe a, just a couple companies. So yeah. having a six cylinder car back then was unheard of. Go ahead, you can flip those. So these are all good pictorial images of the vehicle. Yes. There's yours. Yeah. The late six. So you, you knew that that trunk is supposed to be on the car? We yeah. have that trunk on mm -hmm. our car. So it wasn't something that you bought later. That trunk, which is on our car, has been on there for 115 years. Mm. And then that's our upholstery inside the doors. Yep. Notice the doors are only on the back seat. That's where the family would ride, especially on a car like ours. Ours has got four foot of room from the back seat to the uh, front seat. So you could put a couple kids on the floor and the you know, adults, two or three of them in the back, and then the footman would drive on the inside with no doors. But this car was also high-end enough that the owner could drive himself. And the 50 horsepower is no more of those, okay. The back window, when it's folded, when you can see through it, which is there, is Ising glass. And what is that? It's an animal gut. Really? Not plastic. This shows the single case casing for the transmission and rear end. It's all one piece of metal. There's no flywheel and clutch on the outside. Your flywheel's on the front, mm -hmm. which is super rare. And this is the four cylinder. This isn't even the big one. This isn't even ours. Okay. There's yours. There's ours. So that's what the, the, that casting looks like. And this is about eight foot long. So it's just mag magnificently giant pieces. Mm -hmm. And because of the metallurgy was so good, there's no cracks in this. And because it's a three point mounting system, it mounts there, there, and a single in the rear. So it would pivot in the frame and not snap. Got it. So they're really smart in doing that. Another picture of the same thing. So you know exactly what your, your power plant is doing. There's our giant water pump as we, as we see when we look at the car. So this really shows that what we have is exactly what this shows. Got it. All the different views, side view, up view, top view, bottom view, and really well done. I mean, the printing is just extraordinary. It's on the order of a lithograph. Right, yeah, it's just beautiful. Talk about the level of craftsmanship. They're talking about Fiat, Mercedes, the other cars there, Dirac. Okay. 
And these were lifetime cars. These were not a car that you would buy and replace it in three years. They expected you to keep this for the rest of your life. Uh, the $4,000 to $5,000 area price of this car would have been the same thing as, as, as about 10 inexpensive homes. So this was just for the ultra rich. Wow. There's the seating combinations. Notice how much room there is. Yes. So you would have, you could put your, your kids in there easily. Nice. And all be in enclosed safety and comfort. There's the specifications for the four cylinder and the big motor, which is what we have. Got it. Okay. And the last book is the parts manual. And you'd for sure have one of these too because it would describe every piece, show you every virtually every piece and in some of these you could even get a price list and the price list of most of the parts and pieces were five cents and ten cents and twenty five cents because things were on the order of a hundred times more expensive than what it was back then. There's the Model U, there's your vehicle. So this car in today's dollars would have been about a four hundred thousand dollar car. Would be the price of what a modern Bentley might be. And that's what your pieces look like that could be broken or bent. So you would show the blacksmith that you have this piece on the front end and it's bent. Can the blacksmith fix it? Or can the blacksmith help you with your, your front spindle? Okay. And there's your, your rear end pieces. So it, a description of each piece and a picture of each piece, which certainly doesn't happen today. Mm -hmm. And a part number. I like how it shows you here's your frame and then here's your frame with all the pieces. Well, wow, it's amazing. We're looking at your engine. There's so your then engine. You, you could even look on here and find out, well, your, your pan uh, has all this sectional things inside of it because you might wonder why you have all these petcocks in the bottom of your, of your engine. You have 10 of them. Mm -hmm. Why not just have one in the center? Because each of these petcocks are separate chambers. So if you had this rod ever go bad, you're, if you pulled the pan, you're only gonna find Babbitt material in this trough here. So you know that's the only one you have to work on instead of it being everywhere. Well, that's interesting, right? And this shows your four main bearing six cylinder crankshaft. So you, you know that's how many you have of them. And that's all your firewall pieces, including your oilers, your mounts for your, your lights. I mean, it shows you exactly, if your car is completely correct, what exactly you have. That's our giant bronze water pump that we have on the side. That's exactly the water pump we have. That's the intake manifold. That's the intake manifold we have, and so on. That's great. Here's your front pan to keep your engines clean. There's your muffler and the installation of the muffler pieces inside that muffler housing. Even showed you the pieces inside your muffler. That's pretty amazing. Yeah. And then the overall vehicle. A beautiful pictorial of your frame in case you were gonna have a manufacturer make you a, a custom body for it. That's exactly uh, exactly your automobile. So these were handmade, but they made them to a spec. So every one of these 20 chassis would look exactly like this. For example, the rear end has a cover, a service cover on the top. So you could go down the road and be on your creeper or something and look inside of this because that cap would come off and see if you had a rear end issue with your spider gears or your bearings or your main gears. And you can also set up your lash on your, um, on your teeth clearances, your teeth meshing. So by having the four sets of books with your car, it pretty much makes you an expert to know how to operate on your car. Your transmission. From the U-joints, which is what these are. Your I mean, you're not in the dark. Your steering. You have all you need. For example, there's the complete steering column and steering box. And then there's, there's the individual pieces. So you know what's inside. So if that steering box bound up, 
Well, you know what pieces to expect when you take it apart. Mm -hmm. And everything's made out of the best materials, out of bronzes, out of brasses, out of nickel steels. So you, you're, you're taking something apart that's not, that's not poorly made. This is your sector and your, your transmission levers and your brake levers, all beautifully pictorialized. Okay. Our fenders. Okay. You're just never going to get this today on a modern automobile. No. Like so.